In this video, you'll learn how to draw force diagrams. The first step is to sketch the object that you're drawing the force diagram for. The next step is to draw a system boundary. Okay. And then the next step is to draw a dot. Um, all the forces will have it start its tail on the dot. And um, because we're dealing with objects on Earth, we know that there's a gravitational force down. So I like to always start with the gravitational force. And then th this is a table, and this table is keeping the object from going into the ground. Uh, and so there is a force, the table's pushing it upward, and this is the normal force. It's also known as the support force. Now let's take a look at an object that is moving at constant velocity. So this object is moving at constant velocity. Here is my system boundary. And like I mentioned before, I like to start with the gravitational force because I know all of these objects will have a gravitational force down. It will also have a normal force from the table or ground. And this is going to be the normal force. Now, common mistake students make is they add another force because it's moving. Uh, but remember, an object in motion will continue at constant velocity if there's no net force on it. So it does not need a force to keep it moving. It will naturally continue moving. It will slow down if there's uh, friction uh, or some other force acting on it. But otherwise, it's naturally going to keep on moving in the forward direction. Okay, so now let's take a look at another example. Um, in this time, we have an object that is moving, but it is slowing down due to kinetic friction. So an example of that would be like this eraser right here. Um, it's moving, but it slows down because of kinetic friction. After it, it leaves my finger, there is a kinetic friction in this direction. And so it is slowing, slowing down. So once again, I'm going to draw the system boundary. And I am going to start with gravitational force. There's also a normal force from the surface, also called the support force. And this is going towards the right. So the velocity is towards the right, but there is friction. So the friction is a result of the kind of bumpiness of the surface. And it's going to be in the opposite direction that it's moving. So it's going to be towards the left. So here's the kinetic friction. Now let's take a look at a box that is sliding down the surface. So here's my surface. It's sliding down. And let's say that there is no friction. So no friction. Okay. And by the way, this first one over here um, also has no, no friction. Okay. So we're assuming no friction on that one and no friction on this one. Uh, so this one has no friction. And so as you can imagine, if there's no friction, here I have a um, little uh, sticky pad here in my marble and you'll see that there's no friction it just it's going to roll down it's going to roll down faster and faster okay so it's going faster and faster and this is uh, my system boundary and the forces acting on this object is first we have our gravitational force and we have our normal force but notice this is at an angle and so the normal force will be Remember, it's perpendicular to the surface, so it's going to be in this direction. So the normal force will be at an angle. It's going to be 90 degrees to the surface. Gravitational force is um, going to be going straight down. All right, so now what if we have a, um, what if we have friction? And what if the friction keeps the objects from sliding down? Here's my system boundary. And this time there's friction. That friction is, results from the bumpiness of the surfaces. Okay. And here's my sticky pad again. Here's my eraser. So right now, even though I'm pulling it up a little bit and I could put my finger actually underneath it right here, it's not sliding down because there is a frictional force. I'm going up, up the ramp here. Okay. So here is my gravitational force. I'd like to start with that. Here's my normal force which is 90 degrees to the surface. And now I have a static friction. And static friction is going to be um, uh, along the surface, along the surface, and it's going to be opposing its motion. So 
think about it this way. If there's no static friction, which way would this go? This would slide down, okay? So because there is static friction, it's going to be not moving, and that static friction is going to be going up the ramp. So it's going to be uh, in the opposite direction as it would be moving if there was no uh, friction. Okay, next um, we have a string. Here's a string connected to a an object here. So I have things uh, like that. I have a ping pong ball and I have a string here. So I'm just holding on to that string and you can see that uh, the string is pulling the ping pong ball up. We can draw our system boundary and our gravitational force is down and our tension force is going to be along the string as long as the string is getting pulled, it's taut, uh, we know that there's going to be a tension force. It's going to be in that direction. Sometimes you can have two tension forces. Uh, for example, this scissor right here has two strings on it, and I can hold on to it this way, and I'm keeping the uh, scissors from falling. Here we have two strings. And here's my object draw our system boundary, start with our dot, gravitational force, and we have two attention forces. Uh, they're at different angles, so Ft and Ft. We can also have tension force and a normal force. So let's take a look at that. So let's say we have a ramp going this way, and we have a surface over here. Okay, we have a box over here. And here is our string. And this object is motionless. Here is our um, system boundary. So here are the forces. Let's assume that there's no friction on this one. No friction. There could have been, but let's assume that there's, we'll just say no, no friction. No friction. Okay, so what forces are there? Uh, we know there's going to be gravity force. There's going to be normal force, 90 degrees to the surface. Make that a little bit better here. Okay, so 90 degrees to the surface, that's normal. And then we also have tension force along the surface, tension force, and that's going to be Ft because there's a string there. All right, now let's take a look at another situation. Uh, where let's say someone was pushing a box. So here's a box and someone was pushing on it. So here's a hand right there. Someone's pushing on it. Where are the forces acting on this box? Okay, and let's assume that there is friction, make it kind of bumpy, bumpy, bumpy. Okay, uh, so once again, I will uh, call this uh, Fg. So the gravitational force is always down. We have our normal force is up. Okay, and then we have, uh, we have, uh, this hand pushing on it. The hand pushing on it, we have a special name for that. We call that the applied force. So we have a person pulling or pushing on it. We call that the applied force. And then because it has friction, it's going to have, uh, and it, let's assume that it's moving, okay? So it is moving towards the right. Uh, we're going to say that it has kinetic, kinetic friction because it's moving and there's friction. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at an object that is falling um, at constant speed. So maybe you have a piece of paper. Let's say you have a piece of paper, okay? And it's falling down. Uh, let's see, it's falling down, okay? So here's our dotted, our system boundary. So what, what forces are acting on this piece of paper? Uh, so not only is there a gravitational force, okay? Uh, but there's also air drag, air drag. Okay, now you could make the argument that everything that's been moving has air dragged, uh, but the question is, is it a significant amount of um, air drag? And so if the air drag is having a very minimal effect and there's not much air drag or very minimal, uh, we say that we, we are going to ne neglect air drag. However, if the air drag is significant, like with this piece of paper, uh, then we would we would label it. Let's take a look at another example of air drag. So let's say we have a ball that's being tossed into the air, okay? So here's the ball right here, okay? 
and uh, it's going into the air right here. At this point in its flight through the air, um, what is the what what are the forces acting on it? So of course there's gravitational force, okay? And the air drag is going to be in the opposite direction that it's moving. This is moving in this direction, right? It's moving in that direction. Okay, it's not the peak yet. It's going that direction. So the air drag is going to be the opposite direction that it's moving. So the air drag will be in the opposite direction it's moving. Okay. Let's take a look at another one where the ball is at the peak, okay? So it's at the peak of the projectile motion, all right? So it's at the peak right here. And uh, at this point, it's, it's moving towards the right, okay? It's moving towards the right. Um, what are the forces acting on it? Uh, well, we know that there's gravitational force, gravitational force, and the air drag, remember, it's going to be an air resistance. It's going to be the opposite direction that it's moving. So at this point, the highest point is moving to the right, so the air drag is going to be to the right.